Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 21 to 30 for the CompTIA Sizer Plus exam. Let's begin. When starting an investigation, which of the following must be done first? The correct answer is B. Secure the scene. The first step in any investigation is to secure the scene to prevent contamination, tampering, or loss of evidence. This ensures the integrity of the investigation and allows investigators to properly collect and analyze information in its original state. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Notify law enforcement. Law enforcement should be notified only if appropriate, and typically after the scene is secured and initial internal steps are taken. C. Seize all related evidence. Evidence should not be seized until the scene is secured and proper procedures are in place to document and handle evidence legally and forensically. D. Interview the witnesses. Interviewing witnesses is important but should occur after the scene is secured to ensure accurate and uncontaminated testimony. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Which of the following describes how a CSERT lead determines who should be communicated with and when during a security incident? The correct answer is A. The lead should review what is documented in the incident response policy or plan. The incident response policy or plan defines the communication protocols, roles, responsibilities, and escalation procedures for security incidents. A CSERT lead should follow this documented guidance to ensure that communication is timely, appropriate, and aligns with regulatory or organizational requirements. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Management level members of the CSERT should make that decision. While management may be consulted for high impact decisions, communication procedures should be predefined in the plan, not determined ad hoc by management during an incident. C. The lead has the authority to decide who to communicate with at any time. Although the lead may coordinate communications, doing so without referring to the established plan can lead to inconsistent or unauthorized disclosures. D. Subject matter experts on the team should communicate with others within the specified area of expertise. SMEs may assist with technical details, but the overall communication strategy and approvals should be guided by the incident response plan and coordinated by the CSERT lead. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A new cybersecurity analyst is tasked with creating an executive briefing on possible threats to the organization. Which of the following will produce the data needed for the briefing? The correct answer is C. Risk assessment. A risk assessment identifies and evaluates potential threats, vulnerabilities, and the impact they could have on the organization. This provides high-level contextual information that is appropriate for an executive briefing, helping leadership understand the most pressing cybersecurity threats and make informed decisions. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Firewall logs. Firewall logs are low-level technical data that show traffic patterns and potential anomalies but are too detailed and granular for an executive-level overview. B. Indicators of compromise. IOCs are specific signs of malicious activity, useful for analysts but not suited for summarizing broad threats to executives. D. Access control lists. ACLs define who can access what, which is important for security enforcement but they do not provide insight into overall threat exposure or risk posture. Therefore, the correct answer is C. An analyst notices there is an internal device sending HTTPS traffic with additional characters in the header to a known malicious IP in another country. Which of the following describes what the analyst has noticed? The correct answer is A. Beaconing. Beaconing is when a compromised internal device sends regular or structured outbound traffic, often over protocols like HTTPS, to a command and control server, usually operated by an attacker. The additional characters in the header and connection to a known malicious IP in another country suggest automated, possibly covert communication, which is characteristic of beaconing. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is a web application vulnerability that allows attackers to inject scripts into web pages viewed by users. It doesn't involve outbound traffic to external IPs from internal devices. C. Buffer overflow. A buffer overflow involves overriding memory due to improper input handling, 
usually exploited locally or via payload delivery. It wouldn't typically manifest as outbound HTTPS traffic. D. PHP Traversal PHP Traversal refers to directory traversal attacks in PHP-based applications, attempting to access restricted directories. It's a local web app attack, not characterized by HTTPS communication with remote malicious IPs. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A security analyst is reviewing a packet capture in Wireshark that contains a FTP session from a potentially compromised machine. The analyst sets the following display filter, FTP. The analyst can see there are several RETR requests with 226 transfer complete responses but the packet list pane is not showing the packets containing the file transfer itself. Which of the following can the analyst perform to see the entire contents of the downloaded files? The correct answer is D. Navigate to the file menu and select FTP from the export objects option. To view the full contents of downloaded files in an FTP session, the analyst should use Wireshark's export objects feature, which reassembles and extracts files from protocols like FTP. This allows the analyst to retrieve the actual transferred data that is not shown in the packet list by default. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Change the display filter to FTP active port. This is not a valid display filter in Wireshark and wouldn't help identify file contents. B. Change the display filter to TCP port 20. Port 20 is typically used for FTP active mode data, but modern FTP often uses passive mode, and the port can vary. Filtering by this alone doesn't guarantee full file reconstruction. C. Change the display filter to FTP data and follow the TCP streams. This might help show the raw file transfer traffic, but it doesn't conveniently reconstruct the files. Exporting via the Export Objects menu is more effective for viewing entire contents. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A SOC manager receives a phone call from an upset customer. The customer received a vulnerability report two hours ago, but the report did not have a follow-up remediation response from an analyst. Which of the following documents should the SOC manager review to ensure the team is meeting the appropriate contractual obligations for the customer? The correct answer is A. SLA The SLA defines the expected performance and response times for services provided, including how quickly the SOC team must respond to the vulnerability reports or other incidents. The SOC manager should review the SLA to confirm whether the analyst's delayed response violated any agreed-upon timelines. Why the other options are incorrect? B. MOU an MOU outlines general intentions or cooperation between parties, but is not legally binding and doesn't specify service performance details like response times. C. NDA An NDA governs confidentiality of shared information, but is unrelated to service response or remediation timelines. D. Limitation of liability This clause limits the service provider's legal responsibility for damages but it does not define performance obligations or response expectations. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Which of the following phases of the cyber kill chain involves the adversary attempting to establish communication with a successfully exploited target? The correct answer is A. Command and control. The command and control phase of the cyber kill chain involves the adversary establishing a communication channel with the compromised system. This allows the attacker to remotely control the target, issue commands, exfiltrate data, or move laterally within the network. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Actions on objectives. This phase occurs after command and control is established. It involves the attacker carrying out their ultimate goals, such as data theft or system disruption. C. Exploitation. Exploitation is when the attacker executes code or takes advantage of a vulnerability to compromise the target. It precedes the establishment of a C2 channel. D. Delivery Delivery is the phase where the malicious payload is transmitted to the victim, which happens before exploitation and C2 setup. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A company that has a geographically diverse workforce and dynamic IPs wants to implement a vulnerability scanning method with reduced network traffic. 
Which of the following would best meet this requirement? The correct answer is B, agent-based. Agent-based vulnerability scanning is best suited for organizations with a geographically diverse workforce and dynamic IP addresses. Agents are installed directly on endpoints and perform scans locally, then report results back to a central server. This reduces overall network traffic and ensures consistent visibility even when devices are off-network or using dynamic IPs. Why the other options are incorrect? A. External. External scans are typically performed from outside the network and focus on perimeter-facing systems. They are not effective for internal devices, especially those with dynamic IPs. C. Non-credentialed. Non-credentialed scans are less invasive but also less accurate, and they still generate network traffic by scanning over the network rather than locally. D. Credentialed. Credentialed scans offer deep visibility, but like non-credentialed scans, they are network-based and can generate significant traffic, not ideal for a distributed environment. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A security analyst detects an exploit attempt containing the following command. Which of the following is being attempted? The correct answer is B. Reverse shell. This command is an attempt to create a reverse shell over UDP. This command redirects input-output of a shell to a remote host on port 4821, effectively allowing an attacker to remotely control the system once the connection is established. Why the other options are incorrect? A. RCE. RCE is the broader category of executing arbitrary commands remotely. While reverse shells can result from the RCE, the specific goal here is to establish a shell, not just execute a command. C. Cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting involves injecting scripts into web pages viewed by others. This has nothing to do with shell commands or UDP communication. D. SQL injection. SQL injection targets database queries via user input. There is no SQL context in this command. It's strictly a shell-level operation. Therefore, the correct answer is B. An older CVE with a vulnerability score of 7.1 was elevated to a score of 9.8 due to a widely available exploit being used to deliver ransomware. Which of the following factors would an analyst most likely communicate as the reason for this escalation? The correct answer is B. Weaponization. The escalation from a CVSS score of 7.1 to 9.8 due to the availability of an exploit actively being used to deliver ransomware points to weaponization. Weaponization refers to the stage in which a vulnerability is not just theoretical but has been turned into a practical, widely available tool, increasing the risk and urgency for remediation. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Scope. Scope refers to whether exploitation affects other components beyond the vulnerable one. It wouldn't explain the score increase due to active exploitation. C. CVSS. CVSS is the framework for scoring vulnerabilities. It explains how scores are assigned, but not why the score was raised in this specific case. D. Asset value. Asset value affects organizational risk prioritization, but does not influence the CVSS score itself or explain an increase due to active exploitation. Therefore, the correct answer is B. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.